For many, national parks are places of spectacle, wonder, and escape. But there's one terrifying truth about these majestic wilderness areas. Hundreds upon hundreds of people go missing every single year in them. What some thought was going to be an amazing vacation or a relaxing weekend getaway can turn into absolute hell in a heartbeat without any warning. Many thousands of people have vanished without a trace in areas that are protected by government employees in the Forest Service. How can this be happening under their noses? The answer is it can't, and there's definitely things being kept secret and hidden from the public. If the public knew what was out there and what could potentially be responsible for these disappearances, they wouldn't step foot in the woods ever again. Yes, of course, people get lost, people have dangerous wildlife encounters, but there is indeed an astounding number of cold cases regarding these missing people. The theories behind it are strange, I admit, but personally, after spending the last eight years combing the wilderness searching for Bigfoot, it's getting easier and easier every day to see how for a large amount of these disappearances, Bigfoot is the most reasonable explanation. Believe it or not, weird stuff is going on out there. Welcome to Mountain Beast Mysteries. Hey everyone, welcome to Mountain Beast Mysteries. In today's video, like the intro said, we're going to be talking about the government knowledge of Bigfoot, the cover-up, and the cases of mysterious disappearances. People just vanishing without a trace for no reason, you know? They'll be having a normal day, things will be great. They'll be out in the wilderness enjoying nature, and then tragedy strikes, someone goes missing or they go missing themselves. And it's just usually in very crazy ways that are hard to explain, very unusual ways that don't make any sense when you dig deep. So many cases are cold and have not been solved. But over the years, I've had multiple people you know, government employees reach out to me saying like, either they know that Sasquatch exists, they know that Bigfoot is out there, or they themselves have had an experience. So the government does know, obviously they're aware of the Bigfoot phenomenon, like they, they know of the subject. There's, you know, like organizations within the government, like you have the, the Ohio DNR, I think it was, they made a video series on YouTube about Bigfoot. That was great, it's a great listen should go listen to it, you know? So they're aware of this subject. But the interesting thing is, you know, their knowledge of the vast majority of people that have gone missing in the parks. And it's like, you'll hear, you'll hear of stories that come up every now and then. Um, So-and-so goes missing, he or she goes missing, this kid goes missing. You know, you'll hear stories like that but you never hear like what is actually going on. Why are these people going missing? Is there why is there no actual big effort put into figure figuring out what's going on? You know, you don't hear about that very often, which is crazy. They they are they are aware of people going missing in the park. Obviously, there's cases of people genuinely getting lost in the woods and they disappear for a few days or a few weeks or whatever. But there is you know actual like realistic um, explanations for this. You know. Um, people go missing in the parks, so yeah, people just disappear, they get lost, they can get attacked by animals, you know, anything like that could happen. There's a multitude of things that can cause somebody to go missing. But why so many unsolved cases where, where people just vanish, they disappear, and nothing is really left behind? Sometimes stuff is left behind, but in, in like, conditions that don't make sense like maybe they'll find a backpack or something that doesn't look like it's been through like any sort of hell or they'll find you know a pair of shoes or like something weird like that it just doesn't add up and in a lot of cases if the body is found sometimes they're found like in areas that you wouldn't believe they would actually be found in areas that are extremely far away from where the person went missing and in terrain that is like very challenging so yeah you do hear about these stories but there is it does seem to be like there does seem to be some sort of cover up or, or they're keeping hush hush about it. Now, uh, David Pilates has done lots of work on this. He's like the leader in this subject of missing people. So if you want to learn more about the subject, if you want to learn more about certain cases, you should go check out David Pilates and his Missing 401 book series. He's got a YouTube channel as well, the Can-Am Missing Project. Um, if you just search David Pilates Missing 401 on YouTube, you'll find a lot of his videos. So I recommend checking that out and you know investigating more 
you know, this topic of strange disappearances because they are strange, they are fascinating and they're great to listen to. So it's also interesting, like a couple years ago, I had a lady uh, from the States, I can't remember if she was in Washington or where she was working. She's a forestry worker, like worked for the government. She was a forestry officer. And she explained to me that she felt she was genuinely being like paralleled while she was walking down a trail in the mountains by something off in the trees beside her. And it's, it's, it's really fascinating when you hear, you know, when you get people from the government, like from, you know, the, the forest service, uh, reaching out and saying like, yeah, dude, like I experienced something out there that I cannot explain. And it honestly terrifies me. That means a lot for someone like that to reach out. Like, uh, imagine you, you're working for the government, you work for the Forest Service, and you suspect there's something out there, but everyone that you're working with will either judge you or maybe they'll just shut you up about it. And then, like, the only person you can go to to talk about it is, like, somebody on YouTube who investigates Bigfoot. Like, that's sad. There should be more places where people can do that. You know, and, and they should feel comfortable about it. But I wonder, like you, I wonder what uh, kind of discussions go on behind the scenes with some of these people. Like, it's interesting. Like, too, there was that story of the the hair samples being sent into the FBI. I think they were sent in by Peter Byrne, and they were analyzed. So, you know, work has been done by the government. They know. And then I have people telling me all the time, like Ken Walker, the taxidermist who's been featured on this channel many times, who made the life-size patty replica. He's like, yeah, dude, if you're researching this subject, they're watching you. If your name is out there and you, you know, are a little bit well-known, like they're, they're watching you. And I wonder, like, I wonder if they actually are, you know? I've never, I've never personally had like anybody weird reach out that is claiming to be from like the government or somewhere like i've never experienced anything like that and i've never seen any strange activity really out in the bush like you'll see fish cops like fish fish and wildlife cops like all over the place but i've never seen them doing anything unusual i've never had any weird interactions with people like that and to be frank like uh, with a lot of people that i've talked to locally here in alberta they're usually quite open about the subject and think it's cool that i'm out there looking they're not telling me like don't research bigfoot like don't be out there looking for this thing like they're not saying stuff like that you have to think though like if if you do have a pretty like a big online following um like what are they really gonna do because you're you're too high profile for them to like get rid of you if they wanted to or like silence you right like you're, you're high profile like here we got like hundreds of videos on the youtube channel a lot of people have watched them so it's like what can they do without people being suspicious that oh like oh justin disappeared you know he hasn't been on youtube in a while i wonder what happened like they can't really do, get away with that as much as you know they would if if you weren't i guess in the public eye you know but i do know based on like interactions i've had with people who've reached out to me like friendly people and people who you know have actually experienced bigfoot or they know people who have people who work in the forest service for the government I, it, they know about sasquatch right they're aware of the subject and and some of them have had these experiences that are crazy enough to make them believers and they fear ridicule they fear judgment and all that kind of stuff and it's crazy the question is, what kind of operations do they have going out in the woods? You know, it'd be interesting, very, very interesting if you did come across something, if you saw some weird activity going on with governments, whatever. Like sometimes you do hear stories about like, like, uh, oh, these people went on a training exercise into the woods somewhere and it ended up being a mission to like capture Sasquatch or something. Like sometimes you hear crazy stories like that. And then the, the crazy Mount St. Helens uh, Bigfoot body story, that is probably one of the craziest more far out stories um telling a tale of you know government involvement in the you know recovery of bigfoot bodies after the mount st helens eruption true or not still haven't been able to figure that one out like it is crazy it is pretty crazy you know it, it is weird to think too that these national parks like they're run by the government so why wouldn't they know what's going on if people are missing certainly you know they have teams kind of investigating this. Why wouldn't they? If you have thousands of missing persons cases, so many of them are cold cases. You're not just gonna ignore them, but why would they be secretive about it? Why wouldn't they like 
come out and say like, yeah, the guys like can't really figure this stuff out. Something weird's going on. These stories don't add up. Some of them are genuine the missing persons cases or predator attacks or whatever, but you know, there's a massive amount of cases we can't explain. And you know, we, we don't know what to tell you. Like they, they're not saying anything like that. And they're, they're of course not saying that Sasquatch is taking people, but you know, who, who knows? Who knows? It's, it's possible, it is possible because you do have stories of Sasquatch actually taking people, Mushalad Harry, Albert Osman, Seraphine Long. I'm sure there's so many other stories from the past and probably a lot of tales that haven't really, you know, surfaced online. So it is crazy. It's scary to think about, you know, when you're out in the bush. Um, I want to get into another interesting uh, missing person case in this video, but before we do that, before we get into this story, it's a story of a little kid, a four-year-old boy back in the late 30s who, who disappeared in a very mysterious way and had never been found, but had been seen by a couple of hikers way up on like a mountain ridge where he shouldn't have been six miles away from where he uh, initially vanished. We're gonna get into that, but I wanted to say, if you're a true Mountain Beast Mysteries fan, if you genuinely like the videos, if you're a fan of the channel and whatever, on my website, mountainbeastmysteries.com, I actually just made a page, a photography page, showing uh, 10 images that I'm gonna be doing fine art prints on. Like, I'm gonna be doing 10 prints of 10 different photos. There's only gonna be 100 photos available for printing and for shipping. So if you're a fan of the channel, if you need to do some home decorating and you just like photography, if you like nature, landscapes and wildlife and stuff like that, go check out the website um, and you can order prints there by filling out the contact form on that page. There's a link down below in the description. Um, you know, I've always had people on my Instagram telling me like, oh, dude, do you ever do like fine art prints? Do you ever sell photography? And I, I haven't. I've been sitting on thousands upon thousands of nature photos for years that I've just, I've edited and left them on my computer and they're just sitting there. So I decided yeah, I'll just make a, a fine art photography page online and I'll do like a limited run of these photos. So I'm only going to do 10 of each of these 10 photos and um, that'll be that for those ones. But eventually I'll probably do another series of 10 different photos. So we'll see how this goes. But anyways, you can do that there. Click the link, mountainbeastmysteries.com. That's all I really have to say. Let's get into this missing persons case. It's an interesting one. This is a really long video and I apologize. Here we go. All right, everyone, here we go. We're gonna be looking at the case of Alfred Edwin Beelhart, who disappeared on July 3rd, 1938, near Estes Park in Rocky Mountain National Park, Colorado. This is a, a case that really reminds me of the Dennis Martin case, and there's a very specific reason to that that we'll get into momentarily. It says here in this internet article from strangeoutdoors.com, on July 3rd, 1938, the Beelharts family took advantage of the Independence Day weekend to go camping in Colorado's Rocky Mountain National Park. Their four-year-old son, Alfred Edwin Beelharts, was to vanish that day, and to this day, no sign of him has turned up. Crazy, so this is a cold case. This is a case that's never been solved. It's also, it's also very mysterious. And it's one of those cases, you know, that could be explained away by Sasquatch. It says there were several strange reports of Alfred, including on top of a rocky, inaccessible outcrop called Devil's Nest near Mount Chapin, six miles from where he vanished six miles this kid was a kid like he was a little kid he was four years old and you like i'm not saying it's impossible but do you think a four-year-old can walk six miles in the mountains in and get to an inaccessible outcrop no i don't think so like odds are that never happened um this is one of the stories where it's like either a person is to blame like he was kidnapped by a human being or Sasquatch, Bigfoot, Devil's Nest. How many times have I mentioned on this channel areas with the name Devil in it are usually more often than not, you know, areas that are well known for Sasquatch or Bigfoot or like wild man reports. Devil's Nest, you know, in a lot of places you'll find like areas that are called devils whatever devils this devils that devils canyon devils lake you know and there's usually always weird stories from those areas and and it's probably be 
like they probably got their name because of those weird stories. It says here, the Beelharts family, as well as some family friends, set up camp roughly a quarter mile west of Fall River Lodge. It was located just south of the west exit of the current Lawn Lake Trailhead parking lot. The camping party was located near where the Roaring and Fall Rivers met, just below Horseshoe Falls. The family woke bright and early that morning. William Beelharts, Alfred's father, decided to walk to a nearby stream to wash up, and Alfred came along. Oren Bronson and Walter Hansen, who were friends of the Beelharts family, had also set out to freshen up roughly 500 feet upstream from Alfred and his dad, William. William and Alfred finished their wash before Oren and Walter and William headed back to camp. Alfred walked upstream to follow Oren and Walter once they were finished. Once Oren and Walter returned to camp, the group noticed Alfred was not with them. He had gone missing between the time William headed back to camp and when Oren and Walter returned. Man, it's like these three guys, like his dad, his dad, William, and then Oren and Walter, they're like prime suspects, right? They're the last people to see this kid. It's really hard to imagine someone going missing in an area like that. Um, you know, with people around, like it's not like he wandered off that far away. Isn't that weird? It's really, really creepy. How does someone just disappear like that? Now, obviously, there's other explanations, too, than being kidnapped by people in Sasquatch, but, you know, this is Mountain Beast Mysteries. We're a Bigfoot channel, so... I like to, um... I like to keep things Bigfooty here. Like, obviously, like he could have been abducted by aliens. He could have entered a portal of some kind and just vanished. You know? But that sounds way crazier than Sasquatch. Like, Sasquatch is a physical... Well, probably a physical creature something actually living out in the wilderness it's also like weird too you would think you would think if a, a kid a four-year-old kid if he was being taken by something a person or a creature especially a creature um you would think that he would have made some sort of noise or cries for help or something you, you, i feel like you would have heard something unless whatever it was came up behind him and just put their hand on his face and and just silenced him and ran off. This is just a high, this would be such a high risk thing for a person to commit, like with the father there and two other guys in the general area. Like how would a person be able to do this? I don't know, it just doesn't add up. I could imagine the mystical Sasquatch doing it. You know, imagine something, imagine you're walking through the woods and you're hiking, you're having a great day, things are going great. And then you say you like walk off off trail a few feet to go take a whiz or something. And then out of nowhere, something eight feet tall, just bound in muscle and covered in hair, grabs you and just takes off. You don't know where you're, you're going to end up, where it's taking you. You don't really know what's going on. You're just along for the ride. You know, and then imagine like if it was half physical and, and, and part supernatural, then you're really fucked. And you don't know at all what's going on. Hmm. Then it might take you through a portal and you will disappear forever. No, I'm just kind of entertaining these ideas. I, I don't know what is actually going on here, but it is uh, such a crazy coincidence that all these areas named Devil's whatever, Devil's Nest they are bigfoot hotspots usually for the most part i'm not saying every time but a lot of the time you would be shocked to see like how often there are bigfoot reports it says here the campers began searching for alfred immediately there were over a dozen individuals at the campsite and they were convinced that they would find him quickly i mean i would too like honestly if if they began searching immediately how would this little kid be able to like get so far away and if there was a creek or a stream that they were washing in like i wonder how deep it was i wonder if he could cross it or anything like that but that's like such a short amount of time to just vanish anything's possible i mean you do hear weird stories where people get lost in the woods and they disappear and people are like you know where the hell are they like where did they go and they're missing and then like days later they actually find them like i've heard stories like that of like <clears throat> elderly people elderly people walk off into the woods and then they are like they're missing for two or three days. And it's like, how, how are you still just like sitting here in the woods? 
Like that isn't that is crazy. Like how do you lose people like that? Let's continue on here at the article. It says he couldn't have gotten far in such a short amount of time. Plus, it'd be difficult for Alfred to not hear over a dozen people shouting his name and follow their voices back to safety. I mean, that is a good point. That is a good point. You know, when a child goes missing, like the parents are probably freaking out. Unless they're responsible, you know, right? Like a kid would definitely hear screams and would be able to tell what direction they're coming from. Like, that's pretty simple stuff to do. Um... Yeah, this is weird, but it's going to get weirder. It's going to get weirder. It says, after scouring the area and not finding Alfred, the family became very anxious as to Alfred's whereabouts. When they had no luck, they decided to call the park service for assistance. The Bealharts family contacted Ranger Muma. Ranger Muma? At the, at the Fall River Ranger Station. Ranger Muma, this is ridiculous. Ranger Muma immediately contacted the CCC... Civilian Conservation Corps, a work relief program created as part of Roosevelt's New Deal to help the search effort. Within 45 minutes, over 100 CCC members had arrived to begin searching. So they had a huge search party, and not a trace of this kid was found. On Monday, July 4th, Independence Day, CCC and other volunteers were still combing the area for any sign of Alfred, and bloodhounds from the Colorado State Prison were brought into the park to help aid in the search but they were unable to find Alfred's scent. Crazy, even the dogs couldn't find him. That is insane. The rangers were operating under the assumption that Alfred may have fallen into the nearby Roaring River and drowned, so they decided to dam and divert the river on July 5th. The search party built a dam with sandbags, rocks, and logs and used grappling hooks and pikes to search the riverbed. Despite their efforts, nothing was found in the diverted riverbed, so they erected a wire net near the Fall River in hopes of catching any evidence. When this returned no results, they gave up searching the river. His parents told the rangers that they were certain he must have been abducted. They knew that their son wouldn't just leave his family, and they were skeptical that he had just fallen into the water. I feel like if a kid had fallen into water, like, I mean, it, all, it depends how deep it is, but there'd be splashing around and there'd be screaming. I, I feel... I, I could be wrong, but like when I run this scenario through my head, that's what I imagine uh, going down like a bunch of splashing and screaming as the kid tries not to drown. And somebody like would have probably heard that, especially like the, the men that were around, including his dad, um, just before he, he went missing, you know. By Wednesday, July 6th, the search of the river had ended leaving the searchers frustrated and confused. They continued to search the land, and by Thursday, 200 searchers told news reporters that they were convinced he had never drowned and had either gotten lost in the forest or was kidnapped. Now, kidnapped by what? That is the question. People or Bigfoot? Bigfoot, probably. The searchers were convinced that if the boy had fallen into the Roaring River, his body could not have passed all five of the beaver dams that reached the Fall River. Even if it had, they said, it could not have passed a wire net set up near the Fall River by workers for the Public Service Company of Colorado. It says here the search was eventually called off after 10 days. So they searched the area with 200 people for 10 days and they couldn't find this kid. Now, we're going to get into the creepy part here. This is the part that reminds me of the Dennis Martin story because there's a very similar thing that happened in that story. Um, Dennis Martin, the, the story of Dennis Martin, you can look it up. I'm not really going to talk about it here. I've made videos about it before. It happened in the 60s and a very very similar uh, story but uh let's talk about alfred here again and and how it relates to that it says here on sunday july 3rd william eels a radio appliance employee from denver and his wife were also hiking in the rocky mountains national park they had made it quite far up the old fall river road when they got tired and decided to stop for a rest while resting at around 1 p.m., they decided to go look up to Mount Chapin and were shocked to apparently see a young boy sat on a rock in a section of the mountainside known as the Devil's Nest. This was around six miles west of where Alfred Bealharts had disappeared. Isn't that creepy? How did this kid get up there six miles away up on a mountain like on a mountainside? Okay, I imagine, when I imagine Sasquatch taking a person in the wilderness and just running off with him, you know, similar to, like, the, uh, I can't believe this is slipping my mind right now. The f***ing, what the f*** his name? Albert Osman. Wow. 
when I imagine something like that happening, like what happened to Albert Osman just getting like carried off, like into the unknown, literally, like you don't know where you're going to end up, where you're going, how far you've gone. Like if you get carried by Sasquatch, I imagine it carrying you up, like climbing with you basically up to some like mountain, like mountaintop somewhere where there's like a little hideout where the Sasquatch live. That's what I imagine. Similar to like Harry Mushalot. The First Nations man on the BC coast who had the same thing happen, got taken and ended up in like a camp type area that had like 20 or 30 Bigfoot creatures. That's kind of how I imagine. Like, I, it would be crazy. You would never find this out, but it would be crazy to find out how long this kid lived. Like imagine getting taken by Bigfoot, if that's what happened, and surviving for like years afterwards and like living with them. I wonder if that's happened. You know, you do hear stories like that. Uh, like the uh, Chehala stories in British Columbia. Seraphine Long, she was taken by Sasquatch. I think she lived with them for like two or three years, something like that. She was there for a long time and they kept her alive, you know? So it's interesting. Like, I wonder how, how long this kid, if he didn't die immediately, if he was actually seen on the mountainside, you know, known as Devil's Nest, I wonder how long he lived. I wonder if he grew up into his teens or into adulthood. Weird to think about. I've never really thought of that before. Interesting. It says here, though, the child was said to have made a shrill noise, walked out to look over the ledge, and then either left or was pulled from the ledge. That's what I heard in other articles, too. It says they saw someone, like, pull him from the ledge. If you were, like, kidnapping a kid, would you take them to the top of a mountain? <laughs> or like on a mountainside why would you why would you yeah like this it doesn't make sense i can't i can't even put this together in my head on why why one would do that unless you were completely deranged and had some sort of like mountain hideout of your own i don't know this is the 1930s so like i am not familiar with what life was like back then or what people were actually like back then what criminals were like back then, I have no idea. It says here that this married couple who, who saw this, it says they decided to hike to the point where they last saw him in order to make sure the child was safe. But when they reached the boulder he was perched upon, they found nothing. The pair decided they had to alert someone about a child roaming on the devil's nest. This is very similar to the Dennis Martin case because in the Dennis Martin case, a couple was hiking and they saw what looked like a man carrying a kid. So isn't that weird? Isn't that creepy? Very, very similar. That's why this story reminds me of that. And they never figured that one out either. The eels got back to their parked car and heard the news of the missing boy on the radio. Upon returning home, the couple checked the newspaper and confirmed that the photograph of Alfred Beelharts within it matched the child they had seen in the devil's nest. They promptly drove back to the park and contacted rangers. However, the rangers were skeptical, believing it would have been impossible for Alfred to have made his way up the slope to Devil's Nest. They did eventually set up a group of over 150 men to search the area. They came back empty-handed. Isn't that interesting? Fascinating. Whatever it was that had him got him out of there so fast and were able to, you know, remain hidden. On July 8th, the FBI announced that it was performing forensic tests on a piece of soiled bandage that had been found in an abandoned cabin in the park. The disclosure of this finding was prompted by the insistence of the boy's parents and that their son must have been abducted. Apparently, Alfred had a blister on his foot at the time he had vanished, and his mother had bandaged it using similar material. Hmm, that is interesting too, found inside an abandoned cabin. So maybe there was a criminal, a criminal that was like hiding out in this cabin, just like, I mean, his the cabin was his home and he's essentially like a homeless person living in the park maybe. And, yeah, crazy. Or maybe Sasquatch went into the cabin? Or maybe just, you know, Alfred went into the cabin. Maybe he got away. Or maybe the Sasquatch took the bandage off his foot and put it in the cabin to make it look like it was a person. <laughs> See, you can easily make up your own stories as to what happened. You can just theorize and come up with crazy ideas like that. It says here, on the same day, a woman by the name of Mrs. C.A. Lynch, who lived in Big 
Big Spring, Nebraska allegedly saw Alfred and a mysterious man walking along a highway together as she and her husband were driving. She didn't know until the next morning how, how important her sighting was. When she was reading the newspaper and saw the photo of Alfred, she claimed that that was the boy she saw on the highway. Hmm. Dang. Look, at it says here. On Sunday, November 27th, 1938, when Alfred Beelharts had been missing for five months, his father was sent a ransom note. The message said, sorry for your son. We went west, out of money. The boy doesn't take to us. We will return your son if you will leave $500 in a can one block from your house. And the note. We will return your son within 24 hours. However, by November 29th, the police were fairly certain that this was a hoax. And the next day, they issued a statement to confirm they had investigated two possible suspects. They were not named and were not apparently formally charged. The line of inquiry quickly ended for reasons unknown. Hmm. Interesting. If this lady did in fact see Alfred with a man, a mysterious man on the highway, then he was probably abducted by a person. But, you know, there's no proving that that is what happened. But the bandage in the cabin is also interesting. But it didn't say like that that was the actual, actual bandage. It said that he had a blister on his foot and his mother had wrapped it with a similar type bandage. So I wonder... I wonder if it was from him or if it wasn't. It just, the whole thing with the devil's nest thing is what weirds me out about this story, you know? And how the bloodhounds and everything, they just couldn't, they couldn't find him. With 200 people, they couldn't find him. He just disappeared without a trace, pretty much silently. He didn't cry out or scream for help or anything like that. And it, it would be a really ballsy move for a person to be observing a father and their kid you know, washing in a river. And, you know, there's two other adult men nearby. To have the balls to go take that kid, like, that would be a really, st like, it's a stupid idea in any scenario, but in that one, it's specifically very stupid. So I don't know. What do you guys think? Do you guys think this is a Sasquatch or, or do you think that it was probably a man? It is a cold case. Like, they haven't figured it out. And they never will. I mean, this was in the 30s. This is one of those stories, though, that just adds to the lore. It adds to the the mystery of these park disappearances and the mystery of Bigfoot. Yeah, so let me know in the comments down below what you guys think about this. I think it's a very interesting story. This is just one of many as well. Like, these strange, mysterious uh, national park disappearances have been going on for a long, long time. Literally, there's thousands and thousands of missing persons cases and hundreds of them every year in these parks. These parks are protected areas. These parks are like I, there's obviously like other things that can happen. Like you get attacked by an animal of some kind. You could fall into a river. You could just get lost and, and, and by chance, nobody finds you. Those things can happen. But national parks are like highly trafficked. Usually they're the trails are well used. These aren't like they're they're out in the wilderness. They're remote in a sense but it's not like extreme backcountry like they're they're well trafficked there's people especially in the summers the amount of people that visit vi the, am the amount of people that visit national parks is crazy you know obviously with this case this was in the 1930s or it was not as busy back then but nowadays like this kind of stuff is still happening so what is going on why isn't this a bigger story you know, why aren't we hearing more about this by, you know, the government, by the, the parks people, the conservation officers, fish and wildlife, all these people working in the parks, the forestry service, like why, why aren't they talking about it? You know, they obviously know that there's missing people in the parks. So why aren't they actively looking? Or maybe they are, you know, maybe they are and we just don't know. It's all top secret because other mysterious creepy factors are involved such as bigfoot maybe but i don't know this is all speculation it's all it's a weird mystery to me it makes me worried about every time i go out into the mountains by myself when i'm trekking in like 20 kilometers into the middle of nowhere because anything could happen anything could happen 
something could take me, I could get hurt, I could get lost, and that'll be the last you guys ever hear of me. But yeah, that's really all I have to say for this video. Thanks for watching and listening this whole time. If you've made it to the end, you know, you're a true fan of Mountain Beast Mysteries. Thanks for watching. Uh, check out my website and the photography page I put up there if you want to order some prints, some fine art prints for, you know, decoration or display in your house. Check that out and uh, fill out the inquiry form for an order. And, you know, it all goes back to the channel, goes into like trips and expeditions and making videos. So, cause that's what I, that's what I do. So thanks for watching. We'll see you next time on Mountain Beast Mysteries.